All right, in continuing with thinking about how we're going to approach our creature composite, we looked up pokedex.org, but you could find Pokemon in lots of different ways. What's amazing about them, for as long as they've been designed, as long as you're not looking at fan art, as long as you're looking at the, the real designers of them, they've done a really good job of just making the silhouettes really descriptive. So it's not about how big the eyes are or how colorful they are or how well they're colored. If you just squint and you turn them into black and white shapes, and we can do that in preview here, These are obviously like the cute ones, I don't know where it's saving to, but there's like bigger ones and scarier ones and stranger ones and more epic ones, right? It's always their silhouette shape that really helps you understand them. I'm gonna save that image to the desktop just so I can show you what I mean by silhouette. Now silhouette is something we play, paid a lot of attention to when we did our, our basic shape exercise our shape composition. That it's not the details that matter in terms of eye movement and, and visual engagement, it's the shapes you use and the placement of those shapes. So if I just play with these colors, for this assignment, I want you to be excited by the shapes of these creatures. And you're going to use that as, as a map for your own, right? And you can combine multiples. But every one of these creatures, even the really, really simple one, by not putting it just straight forward, it's giving us a little bit of direction to the body. It's showing us where what angle the chest would be at. You could actually make a skeleton based on that. So the two shapes that I chose, and you can choose multiples or you can just choose one, just to get me started, were these two. And these are actually in-game art, like low-res, handheld game console art. But just those shapes really uh, help you understand what that character is about, what kind of environment they might live in, what they eat, how they move, and all of that's gonna help you by when you design your creature, knowing what creatures to pull from, and then when you put your creature into your fantasy landscape. That does not mean you have to stick to everything it looks like. This looks like a gecko. This looks like it's covered in bones, right? I don't need to use bones and I don't need to use geckos, but I do want to be inspired by these shapes. So I had, a, had ideas of maybe using a fern for a tail, succulents for this kind of thing. And then I decided, well, I wanted to challenge myself and show you how to really think about reference in a way that isn't very intuitive because I could look for like a toad and find the toad at that angle. So that's not actually the best way to really have control of what I'm compositing. Because if I find one reference that's just really strong, because it kind of looks like a, a, a horned lizard, right? Or one of those brown toads. So if I find, even at the right resolution, which would be in this case, six megapixels or larger, and you can certainly do this, but it comes with risks. So if I find one reference that's already at the right angle, in focus, shows me how the whole body works. So there's a lot of good pictures, but not yet one that's really this kind of angle. Where the head is stacked in front. This is pretty close. This one's even better, but it might not be in focus. So the issue with it is, and you'll find lots of animal photos, right? That by relying even on kind of a scientific <laughs> photo there, you want to always check, open the image in a new tab and see that the image is actually full size, so this one is not. It's just the thumbnail. This one doesn't look like it is either. So this can get frustrating. 
and you can search endlessly for you know the right image and just be disappointed but let's say you do find one so this one does look like it's high enough resolution let's check it open image in new tab and you and you say oh finally okay this is everything i need right but notice how this is so different than what you sketched. And you don't want your reference to control all of your ideas. So how is this very different? Well, the body shape is right. The leg placement is almost right. But the head is totally a different scale and it's angled very differently, right? So what that means is if I use that body, I'm also using that spine. And if that spine connects with the head here, it's not going to do well to connect with the head down here. So you have to kind of choose your reference based on the part of the body you want it for. And then you're looking at where the skeleton is going to connect. So I think of it as building a car, right? When you build a car, like in a, a car plant, they have different teams working on different sections. But they're always very aware of how that section is going to connect with the other parts how the chassis is going to connect with the engine and how the doors are going to go on and how the frame is going to fit on top and how the wheels are going to go onto the axle. So we have to keep that in mind. And it's best not to just dominantly use one reference and then just replace the head or replace the legs on that pose. Instead, we want to control the pose because being inspired by that Pokemon shape is going to give us a stronger pose than some of the photos we find. So what's one way around this problem? Well, we could use it a site like Pixabay, and if you, you become, if you log in um, and it's a free service, you can download the high resolution images from Pixabay. And because these are curated images, they're all going to be a, a high enough resolution. The smallest any of them is going to be is four megapixels. But you're also just going to have a, a pretty high standard of quality. Now I could look for horned lizard here but it's going to be pretty limited though every single one of them is going to give me something that's quite large but again I'm trying to find the right angles for things right so I might have to get more broad and just say lizard but again then I find that I'm I might find a reference like this that I think wow that's the coolest head ever and so then I save it and that's slightly a different head position, too, than my sketch. So it's just how much do you want to be controlled by your reference? So I'm going to go for an approach that um, I do like that head. So I might have one. I'm going to go for a, an approach that I haven't tried before. That's even more challenging. And what's nice about the Pixabay licensing is that it's free for commercial use and there's no attribution required. This is called a Creative Commons open copyright, that everyone who submits work to be uh, judged and, and has the potential of going on to Pixabay has to agree to. So there's also no image rights issues here. I could actually use this image just as it is and put it in a calendar and sell the calendar, and I'm fine. But also, everyone else could do that. <laughs> So if you're worried about copyright issues, Pixabay is a good resource. That's kind of why it was set up. So what I'm going to do is instead of looking for lizard parts or even animal parts, I'm going to try to construct my creature completely out of mushrooms. And why mushrooms? Well, I was thinking about my setting, which is like this gaseous setting. And mushrooms, when they dry, Certain mushrooms give off gases. It's also, um, if there's a lot of mist, there's a lot of moisture. And there's a lot of gemstones, a lot of color. It's actually jello, but it looks like gemstones in my landscape. So this is a colorful world. So what's the natural camouflage going to be for a creature design in that? It's not going to be something drab and lizard-like. It's going to be something more colorful. And mushrooms come in a huge variety of textures and colors, right, that I can really have fun with. Also, when people photograph mushrooms, mushrooms are an easier thing to photograph than animals, right? They still they stay still. So you're going to get better angles on them. You're going to get better lighter, lighting on them. 
And that's why I'll often include plants or food uh, in my creature designs. Even kind of grasses and moss, because you'll get better quality photos of them that you can make match the angles you need. So as I'm looking through and I see like these really great mushrooms, then I can download them at their highest resolution. And then I think, well, what if I made that into the head, right? And do I know enough for my sketch to know how to angle that correctly? And because my creature is very rounded, I think that's gonna work quite, quite well. So what I do is I download a bunch of things. We only need five references total composited together. And then I put them into these different folders, just like I did with foreground and middle ground and background for the landscape. I do it for the head, the body, the leg, the tail. And I'm not even committed to the tail. So we'll see. So I have a bunch of these mushrooms at high resolution, and now I have one lizard in there too. <laughs> And what's cool about that is this gives me a lot of really good quality. If we view it at 100%, you'll see this mushroom actually giving off gas. Right? And it's also going to be fairly easy to select it out. But you do want to be mindful of focus pools. Notice how this is slightly out of focus at the edges, but in sharp focus here. So be mindful of that. All right. So now I'm going to start bringing reference on top of my sketch. But before that, before I start kind of actually building these different parts, like assembling a car, maybe I want to mess with the original design a little bit. So this is already different than my Pokemon design. And that's good. I don't want you to be a slave to your Pokemon. I've added the little frills from, from that to the eyes. And I've added the tail. And we'll see if I actually do that. And I'm not so thrilled with the legs being so heavy that they cover up everything. So we'll see if I keep that. Like I can see more of my back leg. What my sketch shows me that is really important is where the spine is, where the collarbone is that connects the shoulders, and where the pelvis is that connects the legs. Also where the joints are for those legs. Because if you don't have joints, and if you don't have a pelvis, and you don't have a collarbone decided on, it's not going to look solid. It's not going to look like your creature can move. And no matter how simple your creature is, you want it to be a believable creature and that it can move. And we will be an we'll have the option to animate your creature later. So how can we play with this sketch a little bit? Well, what I can do, I'll make a duplicate. I can use my transforming tools. So Command T, and I can play with warping it a little. And seeing, well, what if I want to make it a little bit squatter in the front? a little bit higher in the back. A slightly more aggressive pose, not so sedentary. Because I already sketched the skeletal template, all of those will move with me. And then I can just say, well, do I like that better or do I like that better? If it was just a cutout of black paper, what gives me more of the presence of the creature that I want? And I think this does for a few reasons. When you're doing creature design, and you're trying to make something that looks like it's living and moving. You want to avoid horizontals and verticals. So these legs here are very horizontal, the way the feet line up. So by pushing them a little bit, it puts them at more of an angle. It sets the creature in more of a perspective, which I like. It also arches the back more. It's not so flat across the back, right? where like the eyes balance the tail perfectly. Here, the eyes and the tail are at a different level. So you get that diagonal running through. It feels a little bit more dynamic. It might make a better portfolio piece. It's a shape I'm more interested in. So feel free to warp and mess with your shape digitally before you, you start building your parts. So just like you don't want to be a slave to any one reference, you don't want to be a slave to your one sketch, right? Without trying to improve it. Okay, now this is my blueprint. So I'll use that, that building a car analogy a lot. This is the plan. How do I actually go about doing it? So you don't um, build it like a piece of Ikea furniture, right? 
where you just open the box and then you build everything.